Don't you love really positive claims on websites? Melbourne's leading buyer's advocate, Sydney's number one buyer's agent. According to who? A quick Google search and I've seen a page full of links, at least four of which are claiming to be the leading buyer's agent in their city. So who is actually the leader? How is this measured? I'm not aware of any definitive measure. In fact, the industry as a whole doesn't even know how many buyers agents there actually are. So how the hell can we work out who's number one? It seems that in a vacuum, we all rush to fill the space. And I confess, I've been guilty of this myself. A marketing consultant some years ago said, you should make that claim, and I did. But it just never sat well with me. And a few years back, I took it off my website. Now when I see these claims, the word hyperbole comes to mind. And according to the Cambridge Dictionary, hyperbole means a way of speaking or writing that makes someone or something sound bigger or better than it really is. Now, at least when a sales agent claims to be number one, you can test that claim. There are statistics and documented data that shows how many properties have been sold in a suburb and if they can claim a larger share of it, they're number one. But one of the things that they claim, which I think is hyperbole, is record price. It's a very, very common brag. But of course you're gonna get a record price for the street if the last house sold 10 years ago. Of course you're gonna get a record price for the suburb if you're selling the only mansion in that suburb. And then there's the industry awards. Talk about hyperbole. Don't get me started on those. Well, okay, I'll say a couple of things. I don't wanna take away anything from the people who actually win these awards. Let's face it, it takes a hell of a lot of time, energy, and money at times to prepare a submission for these industry awards and then buy the frock or the suit and go to the awards night and have lots of lovely congratulatory photos taken of you. Look, call me a cynic, I don't really like those functions, so therefore, I've got a great excuse not to go. So kudos to you if you win an award, especially if you prepare your own submission. Because of the effort and energy that it takes to prepare these submissions, and also the effort it takes to give yourself an edge so that you actually win the award, well, that has spurned a whole industry of people who prepare award submissions for money. Like you can pay someone to prepare your award submission, which sort of then puts in my mind anyway, a bit of doubt over the validity of those awards because the pitch or the presentation of it might be more important than the substance. So the award perhaps should be for self-promotion. He or she who does the best job of making themselves look like they're the best. Look, there are heaps of great agents that enter these awards and win them. But there's also a heap of great agents that don't bother and I have to say, I'm one of them. I really don't have the energy for it. I'd rather be a little bit more cynical and make these videos. But seriously though, awards really aren't a great representation of who the best people are in an industry. They really just are a fantastic vehicle for self-promotion. Now I'd like some real awards, like with sales agents. Imagine if you could have a secret shopper award. How cool would that be? And I'd immediately volunteer to be one of the judges. Just not sure how incognito I'd be. I'm all for more truth, transparency, and trust in the property industry. If you'd like to join the conversation, please speak up, leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you.